The 359 is sponsored by USB Technology. The USB Implementers Forum reminds consumers that USB IF logos are displayed on certified USB products. So the next time you're shopping for a reliable USB charger, cable, or device, look for the logos. Get the whole story at enablingusb.org. Good morning and welcome everybody to the 359 podcast. It's episode 445. My name is BVG. And uh, before we get started with the show today, we want to wish an eternal happy birthday to the uh, uh, ever-present American sci-fi and horror author H.P. Lovecraft. 129 years young today, forever in our hearts. (laughs) Cthulhu, forever and always. Uh, Welcome. We got (laughs) Ben Fox Rubin and Roger Chang, your host today. Hey! Good morning, Hi. happy Monday. Uh, we've got a great show for you. We're going to be talking about uh, a couple of stories from Friday, uh, doing a little bit of review. Obviously, we don't have our show then, but uh, uh, OnePlus coming to T-Mobile. Uh, there's a scoop from CNET, uh, and we've got from this guy. From this guy. Uh, we've got Amazon reportedly making a DVR. We'll break down why they would want to do this. I'm still not really sure, but... And then lastly, uh, a look at our in-depth profile on the new Microsoft. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Brian will pick out the best, and we will get to them in 3 minutes and 59 seconds. Stick around, y'all. We'll see you back in the chat in 3, 2, Welcome to the 359. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. OnePlus fans can rejoice. T-Mobile will be the first U.S. carrier to officially sell the OnePlus 6T when it comes out in October. It's first reported by CNET. By well done. Me. By yours um, truly. But this is this is a huge deal for OnePlus. They, you know, they've they've made a lot of progress selling phones online and kind of building up a, a niche and cult following. But this really gives them a chance to to push themselves into mainstream awareness. Have they had a major carrier partner in the past, or is this really one of the first ones? They've had carrier partners around the world, not in the U.S. though. So this is really? the very first uh, U.S. carrier partnership. Okay, and how significant is this phone? Is this their like big flagship of the year? What, so this is the one to buy if you're a OnePlus fan? OnePlus tends to sell two flagship phones a year. One in the uh, one in the beginning and one at the end. This is sort of the second flagship. Uh, you know, they had the 6 earlier this year. This is the 6T. That's sort of the naming convention they use. Um, and yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's their flagship phone. And the, the 6 was very well reviewed, so I imagine the 6T will um, will similarly, you know, have a lot of the bells and whistles that people are looking for. Nice. So what does this mean for T-Mobile? Is this a good thing for them? Is this, so I, I've seen like carrier uh kind of exclusivity partnerships in the past. Like, for instance, like Sprint did one with Essential. Yeah. I don't know that it was really that successful for either one of those companies. Do you think that this would be more impressive or significant for the likes of T-Mobile? Yeah, I would say this definitely has more of a shot of succeeding. The Essential came out of nowhere. There was no mm-hmm. real you know, history uh, or track record there. Sprint, obviously, the fourth largest nation carrier, has been struggling. So that was a poor match. I would say OnePlus has a fairly devoted following already. Uh, they've got, uh, and, and they're, you know, Android enthusiasts sort of know the name, uh, even if it's not in stores. T-Mobile's demographics line up pretty well with OnePlus's fan base. Uh, and really, this is a phone that is optimized for T-Mobile's network. And that's the important thing, because uh, you could use OnePlus phones for T-Mobile previously, but you couldn't get access to their fastest networks, fastest spectrum. And so T-Mobile's in the middle of upgrading their network now with uh, new bandwidth, new spectrum that's supposed to be better and faster coverage, uh, this new OnePlus 6T will presumably be able to tap into it. And, and I'm guessing if you are a big OnePlus fan but not a T-Mobile customer, you could still buy this online, right? You still buy the globally unlocked phone. It only works on AT&T uh, if, it doesn't work, if you don't want to Oh, do it's T-Mobile. one of those. So it's one of those gotcha. phones. All right, so Amazon is reportedly making a DVR. Reportedly, reportedly, but, but why? I wouldn't, why I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. So they, Amazon has really been focusing a lot on streaming services. They've been follow, They've been um, selling the Fire TV streamers for a long time, mm-hmm. and now they're really trying to push more into live TV because it, it, it seems surprising to a lot of folks that are cord cutters or cord nevers, uh, but. People still watch a lot of live TV, so it would make sense to provide a DVR. What's interesting about this report is that apparently it's going to be like a standalone DVR that would connect to your Fire TV. So, like, I guess that's good if you already own a Fire TV. But if you're somebody like me 
that would have to buy both of them. Yeah. I, I kind of feel like, why don't you just package them together? So that would be my next know. question too. Like, yeah, yeah, we'll wait sense. to see. It's it's still it's still a rumor story, so who knows if this is actually going to hit the market or not, but it wouldn't. It doesn't really surprise me that they would work on this. They're really trying to like dominate the living room and take over home entertainment. And, I mean, we're, we're hearing rumors of, a, of an event later this year for you know new Echoes. Do you think it will come out that soon, or is this further out? It's possible. It's definitely possible that they would do something like that. I mean, like September and October tend to be like those like launch times Amazon's done events in the previous two years. So maybe we'll see it fairly soon. I'm not really sure. All right. Lastly, check out our in-depth profile on the new Microsoft, uh, our own Ian Schur and Connie Guglielmo, our boss, uh, got a chance to sit down with CEO Satya Nadella to talk about how the company has transformed over the last few years. Uh, definitely recommend it. It's, it's a good read. Uh, it's got a great video that goes with it. Uh, for more of those stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. Thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for joining us for the recording of the audio podcast, everybody. Uh, now I'm going to jump into the chat and pull out all of your great questions and comments. Uh, I'm definitely myself interested in this new uh, DVR program that uh, Amazon is developing. Uh, I would like to see what kind of hardware they can implement out of that. We have no hints on that already. Uh, do we, guys? You're talking no. about how no. it's likely going to be workable if you already have a device. Maybe, but there's nothing confirmed. Um, I like that in the article they have already nicknamed it, and it's called Frank. Frank. That's right. That's such a weird Frank. fun name. I don't right? know. I don't Is know that... where they come up with their names. Like sometimes it's like somebody's dog or whatever. <laughs> they just come up with like goofy, goofy names. So, but yeah, it's um, I don't know. It, 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 I had to remind Roger that TiVo still existed or was yeah, still like a going concern. Yeah, DVRs concerned. are not. A, like I don't really. I do have live access to live TV via a DirecTV Now subscription. Like, I barely even watch that. Like, most of the time I'm watching Netflix yeah. or Prime Video. So, yeah. Like, the idea of a DVR, I'm like, oh, yeah, that thing. I watch live TV when it's football season. So, right. it would be a very specific use case for me where I – and sorry for using the word use case. Uh, but it would – like, I would use it if I'm, like, away at something on Sunday and I have to, like, catch the game later. And, and maybe I can't, I maybe can't even it would do be... that. I can't, ha I can't record a – like – I can't ignore the outside world. Like if I if I know what the score yeah, is, if I know, I know how it ends, I don't want to watch it anymore. I I agree, uh, but it's if you look at the broad portfolio of what Amazon's been providing, also like the Fire TV Cube, for instance, mm -hmm. does a lot more with live TV, where you yeah. can um, tell Alexa to like change the channel via voice. So they're they're kind of like moving into that space already because it's an area that they hadn't really been providing a lot of features for. Right. And in that in that regard, that's why it doesn't really surprise me that they would be working on something like this. It's, it doesn't seem like it's out of left field or anything. Right. It is a little curious that they would opt to do this as a standalone device. Like it just yeah. doesn't. I feel like it's a feature for a you know a set top box, not like its own thing. I agree, which is why I would say like wait and see. Right. And we'll, you know, this was still like the initial story. And as we get closer to perhaps something, perhaps Frank launching, <laughs> then maybe we'll get some more indications uh, about what exactly this I thing is. I wish they keep the code name. That would be a pretty Amazon cool name. Fire Frank. <laughs> Fire Frank. Fire Frank. No, that's like Frank Costanza just lost his job. Like, that's really, no, let's Everybody not. Everybody in the chat, let's get it going. Hashtag Fire Frank on Twitter. Let's do it. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's take questions and comments now. First up from Sean Vega Velez. Uh, very excited for T-Mobile and OnePlus news. Uh, now we can see uh, uh, in per more than one person making big decisions. Uh, I've, in general, the comment section is excited that OnePlus and T-Mobile have been par are partnering up to to give the big carriers uh, uh, and the big boys the the Googles and the uh, iPhones a run for the money. Uh, Sudhir also says it's time for OnePlus to replace the big ones step by step. Uh, I mean, yes, to a certain extent, but OnePlus is an Android phone, so like Google still benefits a l in many ways from right. OnePlus's uh, uh, popularity. And I would say it's not even the Pixel phone that's that successful. I, I would say it's Samsung. If you're talking about Android phones, like Samsung's really the one that, you know, I guess potentially could stand to lose something. I mean, they they make the super premium phones with all the high end specs. 
Uh, OnePlus phones have a lot of those same specs. They don't have all the bells and whistles. I think they're not water resistant, but they use the same high end processor, usually packing with lots of RAM, a gorgeous display. There are a lot of features there that are fairly comparable for uh, a price, as I, as I reported. Right now, it's tentatively set at $550. Mm. And you know that that still could change given the you know negotiations are still going on with T-Mobile. But do they realize that um, all the phones are selling for a thousand dollars now? What's the matter with that? So that's the thing. Like if if you're offering a phone with like a lot of the same high end specs, but it's five hundred fifty dollars as opposed to a thousand dollars, that's that's going to turn some heads. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And OnePlus, obviously, as you said, has, um, you know, kind of like a background in, in phones, unlike Essential. So right. people are going to trust those phones if they've been regular customers. Yeah, they've built up their reputation over the last several years. They started with the, the idea of these flash sales. The, mm-hmm. Those initial phones were like, they're only sold online for like, I don't know, like a few minutes and you had to get an invite. Like it was really hard to get that initially. Was, I remember that's what made those phones kind of like interesting and sexy. Like um, our colleague Juan had it yep. years ago when yep. I bumped into him in Barcelona. I was like, oh, you have a OnePlus. Where did you get it? That's amazing. So I, I guess now you can get it at any old T-Mobile store. But well, I, you will I think, be able to. Yeah. So, but, but like kind of like that thread, I think, continues where they've been able to keep people following. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the essential struggled because it – it did have the backing of Andy Rubin. It was a huge name in, uh, in Google. He's the father of Android. But like, there wasn't really a track record with his phone. It was also fairly pricey at the time relative to now it's not. It wasn't $1,000, but it was like $700 or something. Yeah. So it was expensive for a brand that we weren't really familiar with or comfortable with. Um, OnePlus definitely has a track record at least. Yeah, it goes to show you how hard it can be to really break into phones. So oh, yeah. you know, definitely. OnePlus managed to do it. So let's talk more about T-Mobile. Uh, from Joseph Gauss, do either of you guys have T-Mobile? Or do we know anybody here who does have T-Mobile at the office? I know somebody does. I just can't I, yeah, make a name I, off the top I have a head. T-Mobile phone. You have a T-Mobile yeah. phone. Okay, so Joseph Gauss, question for you, Roger. Uh, do you experience longer range on the LTE Band 12 on T-Mobile and experience better in-the-building penetration in buildings here in New York on the LTE brand? Thank you. Hey, that's nice. No one ever says thank you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's it's hard to tell when when it's working w- well or not, and which you know obviously which spectrum that we're getting. I, I would say over the last uh, two years or so since I've uh, been on T-Mobile, the the in building coverage has been better, uh, but it does vary market by market and and dramatically. And so I know they've spent a lot of time focusing on improving coverage in New York. And that's why you've seen uh, more in-building coverage and just generally speeds are a lot higher now. Uh, but there's still areas that are, are struggling. Like I, I commute in from Long Island. Uh, my, my trip through uh, on the Long Island Railroad, coverage is pretty spotty, but that's also been the case for, Ver- I have a Verizon phone as well. Yeah. The, spot, the coverage there is spotty. So there are still places where it struggles. Um, obviously the, the, 600, uh, the 600 megahertz spectrum that they're deploying now my phone doesn't have access to it. If you have an iPhone, you, you don't have access to it. Um, but I know if you've got a GS9, if you've got an LG G7, um, those phones are compatible, and you, you do see a lot of coverage benefits in building uh, and, and just better capacity. Great answer. Coming up next from Jacob Lombardo, do you think there may be some intervention from the government from OnePlus actually completing the deal with T-Mobile. This administration hasn't really allowed for a lot of overseas companies to go into the U.S. That's a good point to be brought up. That's a very, very good question. Uh, I would say, uh, well... There would be interest. Well, no, I, I think there are there are less issues because um, OnePlus is owned by a company, BKK, that also owns these other phone brands, Oppo and Vivo. I've never seen any red flags come up from that company, Um Huawei and ZTE have had sort of a, a long-standing reputation for uh, concern in the U.S. In, in regards to like how closely associated they are with the Chinese government, uh, it, to the point where some of the leaders were former military, and so the, the, there was a lot of concern about those companies. I've never heard of anything with BKK or with these specific um, divisions, and really, OnePlus is a fairly small brand. It's it's. Um, you have to remember Huawei is at this point, I believe now the number one, number two phone brand in the world. So it's massive. OnePlus is still relatively small. It gets most of its business out in China. Um, and so I, I can't imagine that 
U.S. government is going to waste too much time. I feel like it's going to fly under the radar in terms of regulatory scrutiny, at least for now. Maybe when it becomes this huge uh, behemoth in the market, uh, folks will start looking at them a little more closely, but OnePlus is still really small. Next up from our old buddy Michael Brown, is it safe to say that OnePlus has sold more phones than the Google Pixel? Ooh. That's a good question. That's a great question. Uh, so it, like, are you telling me you some... don't have all of those numbers sitting in front of you at all times, guys? I am disappointed. I've seen some third-party information that it's like, it, it, in the U.S., it seems that, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, the iPhone and and you know uh, Samsung Android phones tend to split the market in the U.S., and then Google Pixel gets a small you know kind of band of that, like a very yeah, a very small sliver of that. I, it's super hard to say. I would say. You know, the fact that the Pixel is sold uh, through Verizon probably gives it a bit of an advantage. Uh, If you're talking about, like, lifetime sales, I I would say maybe OnePlus might have an edge just because it's sold more phones. There are, there. this is the, whatever, fifth or sixth generation of OnePlus phones where we've only had two generations of Pixel phones. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you're talking about just, like, from a unit-to-unit basis, I would say probably the Pixel does a little better just by virtue of the fact that it is sold... Uh, through Verizon and having the nation's largest carrier backing your phone uh, definitely gives you a leg up. Right. I think it's safe to say, though, that they're both relatively small compared to iPhone, Samsung. Yeah. Yep. Just kind of the fact of the matter. Yeah. Uh, From Danny Green, uh, I don't know if we can really answer this one yet since we don't have it in our pockets, but this would be a good request for a good uh, compare contrast episode coming up. How does a OnePlus 6T compare to the Samsung Note 9? We should put those side by side. Well, when when we actually see them, they're not out yet. No, that so. I, I know, I know, Wait, I know. Wait, but one of the, only one of them has a stylus, right? Yes. The, the, the Note 16? Nine is the one with the stylus. Uh, the One Plus Six T, it's it's sort of. I feel like it's probably more comparable to a Galaxy S Nine. Like the Note Nine is like sort of like way up there in terms of like specs, in terms of battery. Uh, it's got sort of the latest and greatest, all the all the bells and whistles you'd expect from a smartphone. Um, so it, it may not be a fair comparison, but uh, I generally like the OnePlus phones because their experience is a little bit cleaner, a little bit less bloatware mm. involved. We'll see if there's bloatware once there's like a T-Mobile version, right? So They'll find a way. They'll find a way, yeah. <laughs> it's too early to really answer this still from uh, Andre, uh, but do we have any of the specs for the 6T, um, and do we have any launch date? No, it's still too early. Yeah. I, I just I was told October... Um, there are some details of her of the phone, but I haven't been able to confirm them all, so I don't really want to share them right now. But um, I, I mean, I think there's going to be a notch, just like the six Ugh. had a notch. There, there, this will definitely have a notch. All right, so. I'm no longer a fan. <laughs> this is I'm I'm out. <laughs> I've gotten used to my my iPhone 10 notch. Okay. I think this notch is smaller, so there's that. Uh, fine. So let's keep these uh, questions in the back of our heads when we finally do get the OnePlus 6T. Uh, what's the specs on the camera? Have they made significant improvements since the OnePlus 6? Um, and will they finally get wireless charging? ES wants to know if they're going to do uh, Qi charge. Is it Qi or Qi? I keep forgetting. It's Qi. Qi. Is yep. there going to be Qi charging? So let's be on the lookout for those when they come through. Yep. Uh, from Josh Boyda, doesn't the OnePlus only produce a limited amount of phones, and will this change when they're bundled up with T-Mobile? Mm. I imagine it will change. Uh, you're right. They they typically do sort of a limited run of these phones. It's not that limited. I mean, they're, they're, I imagine it's like over a million. Um, and that's totally a guess. I'm not entirely sure what the numbers are, but... Uh, I imagine for T-Mobile, they'll have like, obviously a dedicated stock. Remember, they're, they're building, they have to build a phone specifically tuned to T-Mobile's network. So they'll have a, a good stretch there, uh, or a good sort of inventory of phones specifically for T-Mobile customers at T-Mobile stores. Uh, mm-hmm. From, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Are those phones going to be different than the ones you buy online then? Yes. Like you're going to, okay, I got yeah, it. So there's a global unlocked phone that kind of runs across all networks. And there's going to be one that's specifically tuned to T-Mobile's network. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, next up from Michael Brown again. Uh, why are smartphones expected to be cheaper than computers? Aren't smartphones technically more capable? I think it's really just our brains, our lizard brains are kind of locked into it. It's smaller. It should cost less. Although, well, although you know, nowadays, it's like, you, don't you pay for premium for things to be smaller? Yeah, that's a good point. So I would say, like, we're, that's going away, right? The idea of that we're paying 1000 to... Twelve hundred dollars for a phone—that's the same price as a, a laptop now, or more than a, a most laptops. 
uh, we're kind of getting past that point where we're expecting phones to be cheaper, right? Like there are folks who spend a ton of money on phones almost every year. So yeah, my problem with that, you're you're right, but I, I think that there's a bit of a disconnect that the um, phone makers have been able to successfully uh, trick us into thinking that because usually people end up replacing their phones a lot faster than they replace their laptops. Yeah, that's and true. And granted, they they do get a lot more wear. You're with them all day, all of that, but like. I have a MacBook Pro uh, at home from like 10 years ago. Right. I spent $1,300 on it then, and that still feels like a lot of money. Right. So um, I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like those those prices, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, those prices do feel pretty steep, and it's unfortunate. The Mac prices or the phone prices? The phone prices. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. It, and And it's almost as if like if they've already broken through this level of like $1,200, like, okay, are we going to get to the point? Next? Yeah, yeah I don't know. So... That's that's hard for me to deal with, but whatever. I just look at it sort of from a logical perspective, like how much time do I spend on my phone versus my computer? And it's kind of a toss up, but I mean I like pretty much live on my my phone, right? So Yeah, so in that in that regard, maybe it's justified. It just feels like a lot of money. It's painful. Yeah. I'm not I'm not denying that. I mean it's something we all have to think about and that we all have to continue to additionally pay extra premium premiums to expand on that lovely notch. There we go. That's Correct. a shout out for you, Sony iPod. I'm not a fan of the notch either. The notch premium. Thank you. <laughs> See, you're you're in the minority. I, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I've, I mean, it's not that I, I like the notch. I just got. Rogers used just to it. complacent. He's just accepted the notch as an I'm inevitability. Just, I'm just apathetic. It's the same thing with AirPods. AirPods are everywhere yeah. in New York City. Yep. They're just like, and people are very used to them. And we made fun of them. We did. We called them cute. Scott was a meme for a while. Scott, our own Scott Stein became a meme because no of longer. how ridiculous he looked. Now he looks like he was the, he was on the vanguard of the of a new trend. Yes, a notch equals premium phone now. Yep. You can't make a good phone without it having a notch. I Unless don't you're Samsung. Yeah. Uh, let's take a question from Faud. Uh, fr- how is the Note 9 so much better when taking into consideration the price difference uh, when the improvements are, and he's using air quotes, uh, negligible? Uh, I don't think mm. what you were talking about earlier said it's necessarily better. It's just that it's so going to sell more because of its business. Well, I mean, it is better. Well, I guess it depends on the perspective you're looking at it from. Like, if it depends on what phone you own right now. If you're upgrading from like a Note 5 or whatever, then that is a huge upgrade for you. If you're if it, your phone is two or three years older, um, or two three years old, that Note 9 is going to be a huge upgrade. Um, but yeah, there are other there are definitely other more cost effective alternatives out there. It may not get you everything, um, you know, four thousand milliamp hour battery or, or stylus. Um, but it'll still get the job done. It won't have to cost a thousand bucks. So that's why that's why it's important. We see phones like the OnePlus kind of come out there and and be a viable option. Um, so you don't have to spend a thousand dollars on a phone. Yeah, and we'll see what uh, the consumer demand is going to be for the Note Nine. So it's a thousand bucks starting, right? Right. And um, the Galaxy S9 kind of had lack, lackluster sales, whereas the iPhone 10 seemed to be doing reasonably well. So we'll, we'll see. It's still very early, and we'll see how the Note 9 actually sells. If it doesn't sell well after the Galaxy S9, you, you might expect next year Samsung might start lowering its prices. Either lowering their prices or at least offering more kind of breakthrough innovations. Because mm-hmm. to your point, I will say like, yeah, the, the upgrades to this phone from the previous year or the S9 are fairly... Uh, moderate, you know, a little disappointing to be fr- perfectly frank. And so, yeah, but you're, but I guess they're trying to target folks who aren't necessarily upgrading every year. You think that's maybe the better strategy these days? I know a lot of people are just kind of married into this concept, like newer, better all the time. Uh, I myself, like, I, I, I'm never in a rush, but then again, I'm not you guys. I'm not the tech team. I'm not eh. the tech culture necessarily. I'm the button pusher. You're, you're getting you're getting two different uh, types of customers. So I I'm speaking for you for a second here, but I feel like Roger does. You you buy a new phone almost every year, yeah, if not every I do. other year. I mean, I'm guilty of it. Yeah. Whereas I had an iPhone six for like three three and a half yeah. years. I kept that thing chugging for a long time. I think folks are time. probably closer to you than they are to me because that's not really a sustainable habit. Yeah. To, uh, but like, so I have an iPhone eight for work and. 
admittedly, I don't really see a market difference between that and my iPhone 6. Maybe no, it's a little bit no, faster. There's not, there's not. But that's the problem is, is that the chip makers claim that they're like, this this is the fastest processor we've yeah. ever made. It's got more doodads in it. Which is probably it. true, but you just don't feel it, doodads. right? Doodads. Yeah, but, but, that's an official term. Right. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what they, they say on stage. They packed in 100 doodads in the chip. <laughs> in the keynote, they've got... <laughs> yeah. Look at all the look, doodads. Yeah, exactly. So there's like a graph chart. There's like doodad count. It's gone up to like ten thousand now. Yeah, but even even then, I, I iPhone sales continue to do really well. So yep. like I can complain all I want, but like people are still buying the iPhone eight, even though it looks it looks the same as the iPhone six. I think people are starting to veer towards the iPhone ten though, because they are looking to buy something different. Which is exactly yeah. why yeah. in September, in a couple weeks. We're going to see basically all of them are going to look like yeah. iPhone 10s. We're yeah. going to see three phones. They're going to look like iPhone 10. At least those are the And they'll all be named iPhone 10. It's going to be super confusing. <laughs> I, I hope <laughs> one of them is named Frank. Let's hope one of them's named Frank. Uh, speaking of, Frank. It's, a, it's a heartbreaking day because there's so many great questions still flowing in from Sean, from Caesar, but we got to move on because we are just about out of time and I need an excuse to do this. So we're going to talk about the Amazon Frank. Uh, Dan Fire Green Frank. says, if the Amazon DVR does come to life it have and it has over-the-air tuners, uh, will they make the tuners upgradable to the new ATSC 3.0? That is oh. a super specific question that I do Go not, ahead, man. <laughs> I do not have the answer this to one? that one. <laughs> I can tell you that I understood one of the words in that question. So, well, um, look, it, I mean, this is still rumored, so we have no idea what the details on this yeah. thing are. And, it's and, be anyways, and the feature sets to the in that regard, the feature sets are still very up in the air. So that's that is a very hard question. It was a great question, though. Yeah. yeah, I love seeing Ben struggle with it. So, <laughs> kudos to you. One more from Philip Vaughn: Does the Amazon DVR work offline to watch your saved shows? Uh, I'm trying to remember from the report. Apparently, you are able to watch on your phone, so you can uh, do like you watch on the go. You use the DVR. That's and streaming, then though, right? That's not you like, would you would stream it. Yeah. Well, you would put it in the DVR. It would have storage, and then you would be able oh, to stream DVR it to your cloud? phone. Is that what you're talking about? I think so. That'd I be believe great. that there could be a DVR cloud feature to it. I which, mean, a lot of the live TV services have that built in now. Right. So, so. is it is it going to be that much better? I don't know. It's it's they're going to have to find something to make it more useful for people, right. especially if it's going to be a standalone thing and, you know, trying to convince people that are TiVo customers like, oh, yeah, you should use this instead. Now, is this truly a step forward? Because Huey Yegg points out, isn't the DVR a life limited product as everything is trending towards on demand, even for traditional pro programs like sports and news and et cetera? It, yeah, that's why some people might find it surprising that they would work on something like this. That being said, I think Amazon is just trying to have a comprehensive portfolio where they're trying to do living room entertainment however you do it. Mm -hmm. And there is going to be a segment of the population that is going to stay with cable. They're going to stay with live TV for the foreseeable future. So there's no reason why Amazon shouldn't try to find ways to capture those customers, get them into their ecosystem. And then once you do that, you sell them more Echo devices, get them to be prime customers. It's all those get little Get them hooks. to keep shopping. Exactly. There so it, if this is a way to get you to buy that first Amazon device, then they that is exactly what they're going to do. So everybody out there, once again in the chat, get that hashtag run and hashtag fire Frank. Uh, <laughs> apologies to anybody out there named Frank whose job we just cost. And on that <laughs> note, uh, we got to wrap it up for the day. We are over our time. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we got a jet. So thanks, everybody. Roger, you want to take us on out? Yeah. 359 is available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, FeedBurner, Google Play Music, Google Podcasts, the Amazon Echo, and of course, CNET.com. We'll see you all tomorrow. Okay, bye. Thanks, everybody.